Oh yeah, lots of licks, lots of loves all the time. 22-year-old Mackenzie Stover has a big future ahead. The recent OSU behavioral science grad just started a new job working with kids in Logan County and just bought her first home. How do you feel today? Amazing. I feel super excited. I can't believe just two years ago I went from being at the bottom of the ocean to owning a house. So I am beyond excited. I feel like I'm on cloud nine today. But she wasn't always on cloud nine, not that long ago, in a dark place. It was the first time that I was like, if somebody leaves me by myself, I'm, I'm going to kill myself. That internal pain and heartache started as a kid. My sophomore year, I had my first like really big breakup. Um, it was very traumatic. I got, you know, I got cheated on. It was just, a, it was, but it wasn't that. It was for so many years up from elementary panic attacks into middle school suicidal thoughts into just like dealing with life issues in high school and into early college. It was like the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. No one had a clue. I had the plan that I was, I worked through every plan that I had. Okay, I'm going to jump off the parking garage that I park at every single day and nobody's gonna know. So what stopped you? The, I went into work at the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation. I, they could tell that something was wrong. Something was really, really wrong. The pandemic only making things worse, along with a high rate of depression, suicide rates rising. Dr. Megan Shaving with Ohio Health has seen it firsthand. What we know now is it's a, it's a totally different ball game. Even if someone has no mental health history, if that person is feeling stuck, feeling hopeless, having trouble, struggling, that you get help for that person. According to the CDC, suicide rates overall have gone up the past few decades. From 2000 to 2018, it jumped from 10 to 14 percent. But Ohio health experts say more than half of the people who die by suicide have no previous mental health issues. I'm really sad and I'm not and nobody reached out to me because I was that happy person, so they didn't think anything of it. You know, they weren't like, oh, I bet Mackenzie's at home crying right now. At her breaking point, Stover ended up in the hospital, finally getting the help she needed. They were so nice. They were so sweet. And I just, I was very shocked. I was like, you are so busy. You have all these people injured and not happy. And you're treating me who's suicidal like a queen when it's so stigmatized. So they took me back to the psychiatric emergency room. All right, Bobby. Life now totally different. Her new boyfriend serving as a backbone of support, getting a second chance at life. Honestly, it was like the world lifted off my shoulders. But she still has some bad days, like all of us. Dr. Shabbing says the important thing is to know those warning signs and reach out for help. Worsening depression, worsening anxiety, and difficulty sleeping, social withdrawal is a big one. A really great first step is to touch base with your primary care physician. Stover sharing her story in hopes of helping someone else. My biggest piece of advice um, is to go out and get support and talk about those issues and really let it off your chest because if you don't, it's something that's it's never going to go away. Stop fighting those battles in your head and help, let somebody else help you fight those too. On your side, Jackie Orozco, ABC6 News.